Egypt comes the third ever Bumbles McRumbles. You may have thought we were down and out, but we're back. And this time it's not for another rumble. You're in the Muscle Dream Impact League. What is the Muscle Dream Impact League? Let me explain. An eight-man bracket-style tournament, with each match leading up to the finale being a 30-minute time limit match, with the final one being a no-holds-barred 60-minute time limit match. And the winner of this whole tournament gets his wish granted by the almighty god of professional wrestling, Rescalapoca. As for who made it into this tournament, let's go over them. The cool dad Don Crenshaw was able to push down the Dino Boxer on his way to the first round. Meanwhile, Pepsi Man was able to pick up a win against the Christian Truth in a shocking referee stoppage for his brutality. Meanwhile, Bertista was able to put spine to pine, taking out the Frog King. Meanwhile, on the other side of the bracket, the nefarious Little Lord Birthday went up against a debuting Sonic the Hedgehog, using less than honest methods to punch his ticket to the next round. After that, the Power Cat showed off an incredible feat of strength, making Captain Planet look as though he wasn't even trying. Some fans are calling this the end of Captain Planet. Meanwhile, the Foot Brawler took down Dysentery, an opponent several times his own height. Some are calling it an upset, but the Foot Brawler himself calls it a simple inevitability. Donkey Kong's in the tournament too, let's not dwell on that fact too much. And now here are the brackets! Going up against the Foot Brawl in the first round is Cool Hat Paul, who earned entry thanks to his victory in the Bumbles with Rumbles 2, Pepsi Man vs. Donkey Kong, Little Lord Birthday vs. Bertista, and the most highly anticipated match in Bumbles with Rumbles wrestling history, the Cool Dad Don Crenshaw will take on the Power Cat. And it looks like we're not waiting to get this tournament started because the first competitor in the Muscle Dream Impact League is coming out first. Quite possibly the most popular man in Bumbles with Rumbles wrestling, it's Cool Hat Paul. One of the few people to ever be able to claim to have won a Bumbles McGrumbles. Cool Hat Paul sits alongside the Cool Dad Don Crenshaw in a very vaunted class, having outlasted 19 other men in order to make it to the end. Now, it's going to be very difficult for Cool Hat Paul because the Muscle Dream Impact League is structured a little differently than a Royal Rumble. As you can see in this round, in these matches that he'll have to compete up against, he's not going to have the luxury of just simply tossing his opponent over the top rope. He's going to have to endure an entire match. And that first match will be going up against somebody who he's quite familiar with, as he was the second place competitor in the Bulbas and Rumbles 2. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Foot Brawler. The Foot Brawler is a highly competitive individual, and having been the second to last, silver medal is not enough for him. He strives on gold. He quite possibly runs on gold as a robot, but he certainly has his competitive spirit, and that's going to make this match very interesting. He has a lot of aggression he wants to work out against Cool Hat Paul, who previously has a win over him. That can't sit well with him. I know for a fact that he's gonna come out of the gates gun blazing. It's only going to be a matter of time, though, to see if that's enough to take down Cool Hat Paul. As the two size each other up, the bell rings, and we are on to the first match in the Muscle Dream Impact League. And it starts off with Cool Hat Paul having the advantage, seeming to get the Foot Brawler into various holds here, and gets an uppercut to the jaw. Meanwhile, the Foot Brawler almost had a chance there. you got to understand that, the, that Cool Hat Paul is going to want to keep the Foot Brawler from gaining any momentum. If he gets the chance to bowl him over, that football strength is going to make quick work of Cool Hat Paul. For all of his endurance, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do well in a situation like this, because this is a much more, you know, physically taxing style of tournament rather than the, the Bumbles McRumbles. You're going to have to take a lot more punishment because you don't get a, much of a rest in between matches. When he gets, if he gets to the next round, that is. Either of these men are going to be extremely gassed, but that goes same for their opponent. It's going to be about, if you miss opportunities like that, it's going to be all about if you can make sure that you keep that stamina so that you don't gas out and potentially give your opponent an easy buy. But I assure you that neither of these men is going to give their opponent an easy pass because these two have a very personal rivalry. Of course, it was made personal by the foot brawler and his competitive spirit. Amazing. Breakdance leg drop from Cool Eye Paul. But back to what I was saying. 
The foot brawler has an intensely competitive spirit. He's not going to let a simple loss roll off his back like Cool Eye Paul might. He's going to fight with every ounce of venom in his body to make sure that he is able to secure a victory. Meanwhile, the two back in a sizing up position, and Cool Eye Paul managed to get another grapple on the foot brawler. The foot brawler needs to get his aggression in check if he wants to compete with Cool Eye Paul, who is very much a smart worker, but at the same time, that big kick, those power moves are going to be what decides this match. It's Cool Eye Paul's ability to get in those, you know, small, quick strikes versus the foot brawler who goes for quick power moves. You know, slow, but strong moves. They don't hit very often, but when they do, it's like getting hit with a sledgehammer. It seems he's going for an arm ring position. Is he going to possibly target a limb? That would be an interesting strategy because if you target a limb, that pain does not go away by the end of the by the start of the next match. That's going to stay with you and may potentially cost you the tournament. Although he has him down now, and Kula Paul going for a sort of running maneuver. This is what he does best. No! Oh! Big spine buster counter down onto the back, the injured core of Cool Hat Paul. If there's one thing we know from his various Rumble appearances, Cool Hat Paul has an infamously weak gut. It's like marshmallow almost. And I'm certain that everybody in this tournament knows that fact. Cool Hat Paul trying to get better because of a bit of his bravado by taunting. And it looks like the taunting goes bad this time. The foot brawler was able to grab a hold of him and slams him down. A strike to the chin. A knockout blow like that, big punt kick could potentially spell disaster for Kool-Aid Paul if he... It doesn't matter if it... Oh, he's taunting him. Goodness gracious, he just spin-kicked him right in the head. Both of these men are extremely cocky about their chances. The foot brawler, obviously, with his intense competitive spirit, thinks that he has all the answers for what Kool-Aid Paul has. And Kool-Aid Paul, on the other hand, has the cockiness of knowing that in his win column is a victory against the foot brawler. He can lord that over him almost. These two obviously no love lost, again ch exchanging holds into a big back suplex. If more of those power moves keep landing against Cool Hat Paul, it doesn't matter how much posturing the foot brawler does, he's gonna go away with the win. And it looks like that last attack has given foot the foot brawler the presence. No! Cool Hat Paul reverses it, makes him ram his own head into the turnbuckle, and then a gigantic drop kick in the corner. Momentum swings between these two like a pendulum. It's so interesting to see how the fight progresses. And another one. You just saw an amazing series of counters right there. And now Claude Paul going for a sharpshooter. He's got him in a submission hole. Again, this is wearing down the back of the foot brawler. Going for his signature moves. His spears, his suplexes are not going to be as strong without the corner to support him. And he goes for a swing on Claude Paul and misses. But he counters the next one. Another big super kick. He has been favoring the super kicks. This entire match, it's so interesting to see how the strategies adapt. Another big kick to the head! But you've got to imagine that perhaps going for the cranium on a character wearing a helmet is not the best idea. Big back suplex puts pay to another taunt. These two cannot let up on each other. They are trying so hard to prove that they are superior to the other. Maybe it's going to finally pay off. Gigantic series of strikes from Cool Hat Paul that's amazing and a knee to the gut. It seems like he might have taken back control. Counters hit another spinning kick to the head. These two are giving it their all. A spin kick, no. Counter, dragon screw leg whip. If you take away the base, that's going to be very difficult to recover from. And it seems like he has him in a pinning position. Got a one count. Just a one count. That's a very interesting indication of how the match is playing out. He, all the damage that has been done throughout the match, you've been watching it alongside me. It only counts for a one count. The big discus lariat takes down the foot brawler. Another taunt. These two are relentless towards taunting one another. They know. It's like Sun Tzu said. Uh, if your opponent is of ill temperament, of caloric temperament, seek to irritate them. It seems that they may be taking that lesson to heart. Going for another pinning situation. Goes for one count. Still just a one count. The foot brawler is not going to go down that easy. And he finally regains control with another dragon screw leg whip. He's not taunting this time. That's interesting. He was catching his breath a little bit. Maybe some of the gas is leaving the tank. Big Hurricane Rana! It was amazing. It was either Frankenstein or Hurricane Rana. I'm not sure. Top of maneuver. Giant diving senton onto the core. Goes for another one. Still a one count. The foot brawler's endurance physically is amazing. He hangs him up on the ropes. He's going to choke him with the ropes. Cutting off the airflow is an interesting choice because that's going to make... That's going to make... He's dizzy. 
going for another series of punches and we're going to get another discus clothesline. Kawhi Paul has found a move that is working for him, one that the footballer is not able to counter and he keeps going back to it. That's smart. Spinning him around and just sort of... And another kick to the head. Was that a... That might have been a modified form of a taunt. And now Kawhi Paul is beckoning him to his feet. Is he possibly going to go for a finishing maneuver? No, he's just... Stand no, he, he went for it, but the... The football was able to counter it, and is that going to be very detrimental? That might have given the football the opportunity he needed in order to go for his own finishing maneuver. We're going to see that. Uh-oh. He's kind of in a suplex position. If he can get him up, if he can get him up, he's up! Jackhammer! Jackhammer! On to Cool Hat Paul for the football, and this is it! One! Two! No! Cool Hat Paul kicks out! An incredible feat of strength. That move has put down much bigger opponents. And he goes for running Bulldog. He's targeting the head. I think he's going to try to crack through that helmet. Another top rope maneuver. Another senton. Hits the mark and he goes for the cover. One, two. A two count. These two are much closer to defeat than they were before. These two could end the match at any moment with any move. And it seems that Footballer may be the one that gets that move because he stomps the arm of Cool Hat Paul. He's taking control for this position. It's all going to be a wonder about what he does with it. Another big punt kick. As a footballer, he's very accustomed to using that punt kick to score field goals. And now he seems to be wanting to wrestling titles with that, with that punt kick. Another taunt. We can see where it goes from here. Running! Running Kopu kick! Manages to take down the footballer, but he kicks out at one. Maybe it was just a glancing blow. I'm not sure. It might not have been enough to get any real work done. But it seems that the foot brawler is going for a super kick. These two have been hammering each other with kicks. It's so interesting to watch because Cool Ed Paul, obviously, if you're looking at these two, if you get your grandma in this room, and, they, and she looks at these two, she's going to say the foot brawler has much meatier legs. He's going he's gonna to be able to kick much harder. And he's got Cool Ed Paul in a tree of woe position and is choking the life out of him, just like Kawhi Paul did to the footballer not too long ago. What's he going to try now? And again, a stomp to the arm. He has dissected almost every limb of Kawhi Paul, the core, the head, the arms, and most importantly, the legs, with a leg trap choke slam, sends him right down to the mat. What is he going to try next? He has to find a way to put away Kawhi Paul before he gets a chance to mount a comeback. We're seeing now what he's going to attempt another leg trap choke slam that's cutting off air that's damaging the core and that's even ringing the leg of it speaking of ringing the leg he's got him in a leg trap submission but he's too close to the ropes why would he do that i think he was gauging the speed that cole apollo tried to escape that hold to see if possibly another one was necessary he's got into the grapevine and cole and paul cannot reach the ropes he's not flexible enough how is he going to escape this cole and paul kick to the face Think about this, even if Kawhi Paul can mount a comeback and get out of this match alive, that leg damage is going to mount up throughout the rest of the tournament. It's very important that he doesn't take too much damage, and yet he still taunts! He knows that this is the way to defeat the foot brawler. A knee to the gut, and then gets him in the headlock. Another Koku kick. Kawhi Paul could be signaling for the end here, he is! He's got him up, he's going to deliver a signature move to Kawhi Crusher! But, what, that's another super kick. That's not a signature move, but... Oh, no, he's going to the high rent district. What's he going to do? Flipping leg drop! Onto the... Onto the football. He's thinking he goes for the pin! One, two, three, it's over! Cool Ed Paul officially wins the first match of the Muscle Dream Impact League, taking out the foot brawler. It was a hard-fought match. That match went in so many different directions at so many different points in time. We see him put spine to pine here with a spine buster and then bring him up for a gorilla press slam. It was such an honor to see how this match played out, how each competitor played off one another. And you can tell, even if, even if Kawhi Paul is able to make it to the next match, he might vouch out, I don't know. The damage that the footballer did here is going to play into the rest of his experience. He has the chance to face either Donkey Kong or Pepsi Man going into the next round. It's going to be interesting considering those are two very powerful characters. And how Kulai Paul, a much smaller character, deals with that is going to be an interesting dynamic to see how it plays out. And Kulai Paul thanking the fans for their support, knowing that they're an integral part to his victory. Going to all the rings, bringing sides, and making sure that everybody knows how much he appreciates them. Now, the footballer has returned to his feet, and now Kulai Paul is 
tying him up. He doesn't know if he, what he's going to do. It's a wily character, but... Well, Paul extending a hand. And, my goodness. Or, everybody, check. Look outside to see if the sky is falling. The foot brawler has just shown an ounce of, uh, 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 of humbleness. Accepting the handshake from his rival, Twilight Paul. I don't know what this means. Is the rivalry quenched? I'm not sure, but what I am sure of is that going into the next round, the winner of Donkey Kong versus Pepsi Man will be facing Cool Hat Paul, but that's not the next match we're going to. The next match we're going to is Bertista versus Little Lord Birthday. Coming in next, we have one of the most complicated men in the Bumbles with Grumbles. We have Bertista. In the Bubbles with Grumbles 2, we saw Bertista do fantastic alongside his former tag team partner, Randy Urton. But unfortunately, on their run of dominance, Randy Urton has decided that Bertista is dead weight. Those are his own words, dead weight. And has chosen to kick him to the curb. Obviously, this plays a lot on Bertista's mind, but he's tried to put those thoughts behind him. Now, for the Rumble, or excuse me, for the Muscle Dream Impact League uh, trademark, we finally managed to get a trademark, one, and now, he has to try to fight against the Little Lord Birthday. A wily competitor, none the doubt, but Bertista's strength advantage is going to play a massive role in deciding how this match plays out. It's going to be a match against between a sledgehammer versus a scalpel. Strength versus precision. It's going to be extremely interesting to see how that dynamic plays out, especially when we get our wily next competitor into the ring. As soon as he feels ready, and he's ready! Coming down to the ring, one of the most notorious wrestlers in the Bumbles and Bumbles Wrestling Federation, Little Lord Birthday. We, we had all assumed that much like Little Billy, one of the most popular wrestlers in our Federation, Little Lord Birthday was a good boy. He was a fun-loving cat who just wanted to have fun with his friends, but during the first ever Bumbles with Rumbles, when he decided to uh, very cowardly come in again after being eliminated, uh, the buck sort of turned. He did not show up at the Bumbles with Grumbles 2. No doubt out of fear of losing again. But has made his presence known in the Muscle Dream Impact League. It's going to be very interesting to see how this match plays out. Considering the fact that there is a massive size disadvantage for Little Lord Birthday. And an age disadvantage as well. And coming right out to get a gigantic big boot. Plants directly onto the cheek of Little Lord Birthday. I, that might have dazed him right out the gate. But maybe not much because he's still grappling with Bertista. I spoke way too soon. He just threw him like a football, like a basketball. Now Bertista seems to have the lion's share of the offense in this match, although Little Lord Birthday still managing to get arms up in order to minimize the damage done to him because he's well aware that the more damage he takes in this match, the worse his tournament experience is gonna be with a big sidewalk slam, a big boss man slam to the fragile core. A lot of these wrestlers have fragile cores, and that's certainly not helped by an Oklahoma slam! A massive move. Power moves right out the gate from Bertista onto Little Lord Birthday. And now going for, is that a suplex? No, he's reversing it, jackhammer! Just like we saw with the foot brawler. That was one of his signature moves, and Bertista just busted it out like it was nothing. If that's any indication, Bertista wants to win this one bad. He doesn't want to waste any time with a pipsqueak like Little Lord Birthday, who is managing to get some hits in, gets him in the headlock, but no, side rush and leg sweep puts pay to any idea like that. And Bertista's back on the offensive. He's got him in a powerbomb position. He's going for a Bertista bomb so soon. That was a Bertista bomb. That's his signature move. That should be the end of the match, but, but he's picking Little Lord Birthday up. He doesn't want a shred of doubt that he is not going to decimate this child. And now going for a big back suplex, a high angle back suplex. Do you think that maybe, and this is just posturing on my part, I'm not entirely sure, I don't have the inside scoop that some people in the back have. Do you think maybe Bertista is taking out some of his aggression? The situation with Randy Orton has been a massive tax on his well-being, his mental health, Bertista has not been the same man since that split. Is this perhaps his attempt to regain a little bit of control, have an outlet for his aggression? And it just so happens that Little Lord Birthday hit with that gigantic spin-out spin power bomb. 
Just so happens to be the face in the way of his fists. Speaking of fists, wailing little Lord Birthday. Incredible the amount of damage he's able to do, but a side question, leg sweep. May be able to switch the balance. Nope, he's getting hammered again with the giant club like fists of Bertista. I'm not sure how Little Lord Birthday keeps getting up after all this punishment. A giant knee to the head! Goodness gracious, I almost... If he weren't such a scumbag, I'd feel bad for Little Lord Birthday. A spear into the corner and a knee lift to the face! It's incredible the amount of punishment that Little Lord Birthday can take without collapsing. And another boss man slam. I'm not sure the referee might be able to let this go on any longer, but Little Lord Birthday... Little Lord Birthday with a stunner to the outside. And I think this might be where Little Lord Birthday can take the advantage out here. He can bend the rules to his will to make sure that he gets the advantage. No, he throws Bertista back in like a moron. Interesting, he might not have the wily intellect of, uh, you know, more notorious cheaters to be able to understand how best to do it. And now thrown into the corner again. He has him in a full Nelson. Full Nelson slam! The referee might have to call this one soon. I'm not sure how much more Little Lord Birthday can endure from Bertista. Bertista is just putting this child through his paces. He's got him up on the top rope. Nothing good can happen there for Little Lord Birthday. A punch to the skull. He's got him in a suplex position. Are we going to see it? A top rope superplex. Accompanied by some taunting, some well-timed posturing by Bertista. I think this match might be over. He lifts him up again. More hammering blows takes him down. When is it going to end for Bertista? It might end here. A spine buster. I think he's signaling for the end. That's it. It's going to be. Yes, he's getting him set up for a second. A second Bertista bomb. Rolls through. No. He's got another one in the tank. He's going up for a third. A third Bertista bomb. Little Lord Birthday, his insides have been rocked by this by this series of power bombs. It's unbelievable. What's going on? No, he hasn't won the match. Red Aaron! Red Aaron's coming down to the ring! He's got a lead, a lead pipe! He took out the ref! And what's he doing now? He's going to Bertista! He's watching Bertista in the air! Letters of the day, RKO! What's he doing? And Little Lord Birthday on the outside! He's coming back in! The ref's been revived! What? He's got him in a DDT! Oh my god, no! Randy Orton's involvement has completely changed the dynamic of the match. He's got him up for a second DDT onto the skull! Is he bleeding? Bertista! Wait, one, two, three! Little Lord Birthday stole this match! Randy Orton came out and interfered to get in the mind of Bertista and has handed Little Lord Birthday the victory! Are you kidding me? This can't be how the this can't be how the second match of the Muscle Dream Impact League ends with such chicanery. Oh my god. The duplicitousness that has to exist within your body to pull off something like that, it's disgusting. But unfortunately, Little Lord Birthday will be moving on to the next round. Unfortunately, we do have to carry on to the next match where we'll feature Pepsi Man taking on Donkey Kong. Coming out first is Pepsi Man, a character who some people feel has not gotten his due properly in the Bumbles McRumbles. Pepsi Man is one of the few characters to appear in both Rumbles, only eight, and people are, have been disappointed generally. Despite the fact that he's done pretty well for himself, he came in first in the first ever, or sorry, second in the first ever Bumbles McRumbles, and did a decent job for himself, and came in around 16th in the second Bumbles McRumbles, Managed to make it to the final five, although he was the first of those five eliminated. Hopefully this time he can do a little bit better against the rotten no-good scoundrel that is Donkey Kong. Coming out next, coming from Congo Bongo is... What? Um, backstage, uh, I think somebody accidentally let Lanky Kong uh, loose supposed to be Donkey Kong's match, and, uh... You gotta be kidding. No show? 
Okay, so apparently, Donkey Kong has decided not to make his contracted appearance and has instead sent Lanky Kong in his stead. Sounds like Donkey Kong, yeah, bulking out as soon as a real challenge shows up. Well, the new scheduled match is apparently Pepsi Man versus Lanky Kong with Diddy Kong in his corner. Starting off the match with a gigantic overhead German belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Should set the tone, but no, Lanky Kong immediately returns with a belly-to-belly -belly of his own. A and is hammering. What is this Lanky Kong we're seeing? Lanky Kong has never even had an official match, as you can see by his win-loss record in his lower third graphic. This is his first ever competitive match. And immediately Kong's head with him like an idiot and tells him to suck it. Before shoulder barging Pepsi Man! Is Lanky Kong the best kept secret of the DK crew? Could he potentially be a better wrestler than Donkey Kong? We don't know that for it, sure, because it's his first ever match, and Donkey Kong has only ever been in one match, the Bumbles of Grumbles 2 Second City Slam. But now we get to see what Lanky Kong has made up with a beautiful headlocked hip toss. Goes for a pin immediately, but does not even get the one count. That's how fresh and refreshed Pepsi Man's feeling after that new flavor of Pepsi debuted. He tells him to suck it, and then Pepsi Man, no, gets countered with a backdrop. Lanky Kong has, I don't want to jinx it by prematurely saying that he's good, but that DET may prove otherwise. I'm calling it right now, he might be the best wrestler that the DK crew has to offer because Diddy Kong is obviously nothing to uh, write home about, and Donkey Kong is the worst. So maybe we might be seeing a second round place for the DK crew with Lanky Kong, but Pepsi Man is obviously not going to go down easy. Gigantic flipping belly to belly suplex. Pepsi Man's strength in this regard to throw an orangutan with such strength is admirable, but at the same time, if, if Lanky Kong... But that's what I'm talking about right there. Lanky Kong, this is his first match. He does not have the ring awareness to know to pull Pepsi Man away from the ropes or to not get a rope break. It doesn't matter if you have your opponent dead to rights. If they're on the ropes, then that's going to save them from elimination. That was a single punch, and it took Pepsi Man right off his feet, and he steps over him like he's nothing. And toss it, Lanky Kong. Now, cockily rubbing his foot in the face of Pepsi Man. Where has this Lanky Kong been the entire time? Pepsi Man might not have as easy as a road to the next round against Cool Eye Palsy originally anticipated. I'm sure he thought it would be an easy fight against Donkey Kong, but no, he gets shoulder barged by Lanky. Now gets whipped into the ropes. What's going to happen next? Another shoulder barge. Lanky Kong has shown himself to be both a technician and a powerhouse, but still lacks some vital intelligence, but still can form an electric chair drop. And another step across the chest. He's really asserting his dominance over Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man, he's done good, but I don't think he's done quite as good as we'd all anticipated. Could this be the choking that we've seen Pepsi Man exhibit in previous rumbles coming back to bite him? I'm not quite sure. We're going to see how he handles the rest of this match, where he gets countered by Lanky Kong before being thrown back into the corner. And a clothesline to the back of the neck before doing push-ups. Unlike with Foot Brawler and Cool Ad Paul, he might want to call, calm down on the cockiness as he gets poked in the uh, non-existent eyes by Lanky Kong. Big clothesline takes down Lanky. Now what's he planning here? Punches him against the ropes. And he's got him up in a body slam position. Throws him against those taut ring ropes. That's cruel. For anybody that doesn't know, these ring ropes are incredibly taut. If you run into them with your chest, you're breaking a rib, no doubt. you got to run into it with the small of your back. And now the two are in a clash where Lanky Kong gets the advantage for a big back suplex. I tell you what, when this match started, I expected this to be an easy layup for Pepsi Man. But now, now I'm not so sure. Lanky Kong might have enough in the tank in order to take down Pepsi Man and prove... He's a valuable member of the DK crew. Not the first, but maybe the best. Drop downs over and over again, and another shoulder barge. That's becoming one of Lanky's favorite techniques. It takes down Pepsi Man and makes sure it puts pay to any attempts 
to put this match back in his momentum in his favor. Close lines like that. I don't know. If Diddy Kong's just tearing up the announce table. He's going to, up top. A big body press, and he goes for a pin. He gets the two count. Pepsi Man not in a good way, but he might turn it around. He's hulking up. He's feeling the carbonation. He shook him up. And now the bottle top is about to pop as Pepsi Man slams it down with a spine buster. Very popular move tonight. He's just setting him up. Could he be going for his scissors kick? That's right, the Pepsi plunge. If he gets his signature move, the, po the soda popper, it's all going to be over. One, two. Gets a two count on Lanky Kong. If he gets that signature move, no, a drop kick to the knees. Taking out the base. And Lanky Kong going for a pump handle slam. Gets him down directly on the back. This might be it for Pepsi Man. Is he dented enough to get stayed down? No! That was close. That was a really close one. Lanky Kong now trying to leave the ring? No, it was just to stun Pepsi Man. He's going to the top rope again for another body press. That didn't, that didn't get, he didn't get all of that. Lanky Kong might have injured himself a bit too much there. Pepsi Man, he's going up for it. I can feel it. He's going for the soda popper. Swing around onto the neck. He got the soda popper. If he can pin Lanky Kong, it's all over. He's got him down one, two, three, it's over. What an impressive showing from Lanky Kong, but still, he can't beat the seniority of Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man is a wily competitor, if nothing else, and he was going to make sure that this upstart, in his first ever match, which he impressed greatly for, wasn't going to take him down. His ambitions do not end here. Going on to the next round. It's the most hotly anticipated match in Bumbles McFumbles wrestling history. Rivals, former friends, Cool Dad and Power Cat are coming to blows here. Here he comes. The first ever Bumbles McGrumbles winner, the Cool Dad Darn Crenshaw, is coming down to the ring. Much like we saw with Bertista and Randy Orton earlier, we saw a friendship dissolve before our very eyes. The Cool Dad and the Power Cat Jeff Winslow were the best of friends for years. A former tag team dissolved. College roommates, best men at each other's weddings. Suddenly, though, Cool Dad gets a little bit too much momentum on his side, and Power Cat starts to wonder, what about me? Where's my, where's my adulation? It's a shame to see, honestly. I wish it didn't have to end this way, but egos have gotten in the way of friendship. The Cool Dad trying to keep it composed, but I know for a fact he has as much animosity towards the Power Cat as the Power Cat has towards him. Speaking of the Power Cat, he's coming down to the ring, waylaid by the fans' disapproval. The Power Cat seems to show no remorse for what he's done. He feels that it's what's necessary to advance his career. He doesn't care about his friend anymore. He just wants what's best for him. And in that, I almost pity him. I really do. I feel bad that he let Greed for his own career take over so much. And now the two are jockeying at each other. What's going on here? No. Wait, no, no, no. Cool Dad has let his aggression get the better of him. He's, he's ripped his shirt off. The two are fighting outside the ring. This No, 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 no. You can't fight outside the ring. The, the bell has not rung yet. This match has not been made official. Cool Dad entering the ring. He's going up to the top rope. What's he doing? Cool Dad, John Crenshaw! The Cool Dad just tried to dive to the outside onto the Power Cat. That is the aggression I'm talking about. He's trying to take out all of his anger onto the Power Cat. The Power Cat is getting a weapon. Oh my god, no. If he uses that, this match is officially over. Cool Dad manages to get the weapon out of his hand. But I'm telling you, if that weapon is, is swung, this match has to be thrown out. It's a disqualification. Oh no. Dad, please don't. Cool Dad! Cool Dad John Crenshaw is belting the Power Cat in the face, an elbow to the face, 
everything you're seeing after this is not a, a scheduled part of the Muscle Dream Impact League. This is all, this is all, th this is hatred. That's what this is, this is hatred. These are two men who held each other in the highest regards, now battering the piss out of each other. Everything you're seeing, around, no, this is not a match, this is a fight. This is a brawl. Neither of these men will... I, I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen with the brackets now? We... This is... We did not account for something like this happening. I, I'm, I'm getting word from the backstage area. I don't know what's... I don't know what's going to happen. But the cool dance going up to the top rope again! Pinpoint elbow! Off the top rope to the floor! Cool Dad is not holding anything back against his former friend. This is... This is heartbreaking, honestly. These two have known each other for so long. Their kids are friends. And now this is happening. This is what... Ha this is what the Power Cat has driven the Cool Dad to do. This is disgusting, honestly. I, I, I hate that this is how their fairy tale dream has to end. But it seems that it's not either of their choices now. They're locked in a crash course to annihilation. And now the Cool Dad takes a fan's belt from the audience. Meanwhile, the Power Cat seems to be procuring from under the ring a baseball bat. But it's not gonna help. Dad's got the belt and is now tanning the Cool the, the Power Cat's hide. Goodness. The level of aggression here in this match is greater than some extreme rules matches I've seen. I've seen quite a few matches in my day. None have been quite as violent or chaotic as this one so far. Oh, he's got a chair. He's introduced a chair into this situation. What's he going to do with it? He cracked it across Cool Dad's head. He could have split his head. He did. The Cool Dad Don Crenshaw is bleeding. His head, his skull has been split open. His life juice is spilling out. And a big back suplex onto the chair. And now he's got him in another headlock. What is this going to do? Headbutt and a big belly to belly. You can catch small glimpses there of the crimson mask that is now on the cool dad Don Crenshaw's face. It's disgusting. A back suplex. It's taunting now. This is unbelievable. A big punch. Puts him right on his rear. And now a kick directly to the penis. There's no telling what these two are going to try now. Now that all common sense, all rules have been thrown out the window. Speaking of throwing out the window. No. The, the cool dad tried to charge down the power cat. But no, the power cat instead managed to duck and dodge underneath the attack. And now cool dad has regained control. What's he doing here? He's trying to throw him against the barricade. But no. The power cat manages to take control back and is now ringing the arm. The headbutt to the shoulder. He's trying to take away all power. He knows that the punishment that the cool dad can provide is more than he's ready to take. Big backdrop onto the floor. My goodness. These two are not leaving anything off the table, including slamming his head into the solid steel ring post. This is insanity. I can't, I can't fathom. What drives two men to do this to each other? The betrayal that the cool dad has had to experience is causing him to deliver a dad buster on the outside. And now he's going under the ring for something else. I don't know what it could be. It could possibly be trying to be cure. It's, it's another chair and he's not wasting any time putting it to good use, slamming it across the power cat's face. And now he's waiting for him inside. What's he doing? Big suplex, he can lift up the power cat and slams him onto the chair. These men are using such common household items to such painful, effective use. Big slam to the face and now, no, no, Cool Dad, don't do it. Don't do it, Cool Dad, don't do it. Oh, he just pulmonized his ankle. He just slammed that chair on his ankle like a bear trap. To anybody who does not understand how painful what the cool dad just did is, I want you to reach down right now. Feel the back of your Achilles tendon. Up just above your heel. Feel that. Feel how tender it is. How you can feel any squeeze, any pain that comes onto it. Now imagine having a vice snapped around it. These two 
are leaving nothing. Nothing in the ring except each other's blood. All the aggression, is the aggression being worked out here or is this just the beginning? Who knows what the future holds for these two if this is the bar they've set? Powercat trying to find more weapons to even the odds, but it's not going to work. And he throws Powercat into the announce table. Not where I'm situated, obviously. I'm situated in a, in a safe distance, but now what is he doing? A big, a DDT! Slamming the skull into the floor is such a dangerous thing to do. And that, what is he doing? What is he doing to the announce table? Our two old men there are very confused. No, he's not going to. He, he has the power cat set up against... He set him up on the table. What's he doing? Another high-risk move from the cool dad, John Crenshaw? The madman! He just elbow dropped. From, like... Uh, like, ten feet away. Through the announce table onto the power cat. Power cat might be out. I can't believe what we've seen here, folks. This is the most bloody war I've ever seen take place in a wrestling ring. And he's throwing them all around the arena. What is he going to try next? That was a hard right hand. And now just continuously waylaying the skull with more and more shots. What is he going to do? When is enough enough for these two? He's carrying them by the scruff of the neck. What does he have planned next? He throws them away. And the power cat still has more left in the tank. Slamming the back of his head against the metal bit of the entrance way there. This is brutality. If you ever... I don't, I don't recommend showing your children this. This is highly aggressive, dangerous, violent content. And good God, I don't know what to make of it. He's still throwing them further. He's trying to take them to the backstage area, I believe. The power cat trying to escape, but a side rush and leg sweep onto the back. Is enough to stun him long enough for the cool dad to grab him into another DDT. He's making sure he can't fight back. For what I assume, he, yes, he's picking him back up. He grabbed him by the scruff of the neck. He's dragging him to the backstage area. And I, we've lost visual. Now both men have been eliminated from the Muscle Dream Impact League. And unfortunately, I, I the back the, 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 the higher ups are telling me that we need to stretch for time. So um, I don't know what we're going to do. But how about um. I'm, I, I, uh, um, um, uh, impromptu ladder match. We're having an impromptu ladder match. A six-man ladder match featuring some of the wrestlers who did not qualify for the Muscle Dream Impact League. First up, Mutantsoar. Why not? Mutantsoar, obviously a very strong competitor, but for some reason was just too busy to attend the qualification round for the Muscle Dream Impact League is instead choosing to show up here for the ladder match. As for what's at stake in this ladder match, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'll, I'll think of something. I'll, I'm sure I'll think of something. Meanwhile, Mutant Sorka making his way down to the ring. Obviously, he feels very confident. A strong individual. He is not going to let this opportunity pass him by so easily. He's going to take out whoever comes out next. And whoever that is, I believe he's finding out in just a moment. It would not be a Bumbles McGrumbles event without one of our most prolific competitors. And that would happen to be the Lord of Darkness himself, Skeletor. Seeing Skeletor without He-Man by his side is, uh, you know, interesting. It's interesting to see him, uh, you know, act independent of his rival, but at the same time, you have to understand that Skeletor wants to stake his claim to being his own band. He doesn't want to be tied down to the War for Eternia forever. He wants to branch out, and obviously he's branched out to dancing. With his truncated appearances, his entrances in the Rumbles, we've never got to see Skeletor's full dance. And now we finally are. Clearly he's been working on his moves. These are, uh... their moves. He's definitely increased the amount of moves that he knows. He's even raising the roof. This is a open-air arena. It's just embarrassing on this part, honestly. And he's uh, doing the dinosaur. Somebody help him. Send out the next person, please. He at least timed his pyro to his... 
Ladies and gentlemen, a man that we had high hopes for in the previous Rumble, and yet in no uncertain terms under-delivered massively, this is Zubaz. Zubaz obviously torn up by his loss in the previous Rumble and in life in general, uh, is looking to stake a claim by winning this ladder match. It's going to be interesting because while he's not particularly the strongest competitor, he does have wiliness on his side. As soon as I compliment him, he falls on his face in the exact same way that he fell on his face before. It's interesting how he seeks to prove me wrong with this, but he's at least regained a little bit of composure. Nothing worse can happen, honestly. The worst thing that can happen is that he loses the match from here on out, so at least he can handle himself a little bit more. I give him one thing and he takes it away, you know? I, I, he, I'm trying to work with him here, but this is honestly not easy. It's just, it's embarrassing to an extent. But he's somehow made his way into this ladder match, so hopefully he can turn his luck around and finally win his first ever match in the Bumps and Troubles Wrestling Federation. It'll be interesting to see what strategy he takes. Now, returning from the depths of darkness, is our resident vampire lord, Lord Von Ghoulish. Taking a sweet time, now that we know that it's the Dark Lord himself. I don't think he needs to indulge as much in this intro. And the, the, the graphics team seems to agree with me. Hopefully he'll have a bit more pep in his step and uh, Cut down on the theatrics because we need to get on with the match. But also, maybe actually don't go too fast. We are still trying to figure out what to do about the situation developing between Cool Dad and Power Cat. I'm getting word that they're still brawling in the backstage area. So however long it takes to get that under control, it's going to be, you know, interesting to see. Meanwhile, Von Ghoulish, misinterpreting the dress code previously, now hopefully will stay in his wrestling attire for the entirety of the match, although there's no, there's no telling. Von Gula sort of just does whatever he wants. He has the power. He has the ability to control darkness itself, yet has uh, chosen not to employ that in his wrestling strategy at all. Which is an interesting tactic, if I'm being honest. If I were him, I would want to employ it as much as I could. I'd be sending, you know, you know, dark disaster spheres and, you know, hell spikes out to impale my enemies, but... Maybe there's an ounce of respect that Von Gulish has for his opponents. I don't know anyone who Von Gulish has respect for. But perhaps he, in the spirit of fair competition, he's chosen to take it easy on the mortals of this world. Hopefully he does something interesting to talk about. To make up for the fact that this intro is still going. I tell you what, the next person in the backstage area is probably raring to go. Wondering what the heck is taking so long. We need to get him like a bike for his next appearance. That next person, a fan favorite as we discussed. Ladies and gentlemen, get your good boy points. It's Little Billy. Little Billy, an inspiring case of what happens when you dedicate your life to being a good boy. Little Billy is coming down to the ring and he has so much gusto. Take notes, Von Ghoulish. This is what it looks like to come down to the ring with a little bit of pep in your step. Jumping off the ropes, he loves the acrobatics, he loves to entertain the crowd. I can't wait to see what he does. And now we await the final competitor in our six-man ladder match. Returning from the Bumbles McGrumbles 2, it's Yellow Jacket. A genetically modified wasp. Hornet, Yellow Jacket, any sort of, you know, bee-type creature. He is now coming back down to the ring for another chance. Previously eliminated by Von Ghoulish in the second Rumble. This could be a chance of redemption. Getting back at the man who snuffed his hopes and dreams so, mu so long ago. He's prepping himself. He's clearly hyped for this match. He knows that this is a big fight. This might be the biggest match of his entire life. As long as he doesn't lose his stinger, there might be several matches to come. Perfectly timed to the music, by the way. He's clearly a showman. Giving the fans a show. Waiting for the other five competitors to come back to reality from the pocket dimension that they hide in when other people do their entrances. 
and it seems they finally returned. It's time for the ladder match, and now is the time. My job as a commentator gets very, very difficult. The madness in the ring. I hope that doesn't sound tricky. The madness in the ring is incomprehensible, frankly. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to keep up with everything going on in the ring. As you can see, we've already got Yellow Jacket waylaying Zubaz with a steel chair, not unlike we've seen previously in the last match. The Mutant Sword fighting Skeletor and Lord Von Ghoulish fighting Little Billy of all people. Big back suplex from Zubaz on to Yellow Jacket. And a big arm drag onto Von Ghoulish. Little Billy, despite the fact that there is a solid at least thousand year age gap between these two. Little Billy. That's the acrobatics you have to look out for when you're fighting against Little Billy. A tilt-a-whirl arm drag. And a big DDT onto Mutants or Inzaguri onto Zubaz. This is what I'm talking about. How do I possibly keep up with all the action? Now Yellow Jack is setting up a ladder on the outside of the ring before realizing that was stupid. Zubaz coming out to greet him. And a big shot with the ladder. Imagine a steel chair times 10 and that's the damage that ladder can do. Yellow Jack going to the ring. Gigantic swinging DDT! Yellow Jacket set up the ladder. He's climbing up, but Zubaz knocks him down. You gotta imagine a fall from that sort of height is going to be very painful. It's a lot more painful than a simple fall. From your regular height down to the mat, that's you're just increasing the distance. It's a risk versus reward. And it's one that I think that these men are all willing to go through in order to win. Von Ghoulish's old bones might not be able to take as much. Yellow Jacket's already back up. He's got his hands on the briefcase. If he wins the match this quickly, I'll be so mad. But he seems to be in a bad position because Von Ghoulish has taken notice of him, slaps him in the butt, and he falls back down to earth onto a ladder. And he gets sh smashed with a ladder alongside Zubaz. Little Billy on the outside of the ring. What's he doing with those stairs? Now Von Ghoulish setting up a ladder. Hopefully he can get to it if he's mind can finally comprehend what it means to be up a ladder and the clotheslines mutant sword von ghoulish is completely lost meanwhile skeletal going up and then goes directly back down he must have realized he wasn't in the proper position in order to get the most out of his ladder placement another shot with the ladder takes down the yellow jacket as i think von ghoulish might finally be going up yes he's going up and he does he get his hands on it he has his hands on the briefcase but no skeletor stops him and he takes another tumble down to the mat this is what, and a tiger suplex on the Zubaz. Warped around the ring. There's quantum realm shenanigans going on that I'm not fully prepared to deal with. Goodness. I, I, I'm telling you, it's impossible to call a six-man ladder match by yourself. It's just anarchy. You have Mutant Sword and Zubaz being smashed with ladders into their knees. They're not going to be able to climb with that sort of damage. Meanwhile, Von Ghoulish still on the receiving end of punishment at the hands of Little Billy, of all people. The eight-year-old is able to take on the Lord of Horror. Skeletor is back up. What could he possibly be planning? No, he misses it. And he's being sent down. There he goes, straight to hell, apparently. The stairs are stretching the ring ropes to their breaking point. Skeletor is on the ground. Zubaz is on the ground. And Little Billy's outside the ring. Meanwhile, Mutant Sword sets up the ladder. And he seems to be going for something. No, he falls down to the mat below. There's no cushioning there to make that fall any less painful. Side rush and leg sweep. And he's got him in a, in a world's strongest slam onto a ladder from Zubaz to the yellow jacket. I tell you what, those two have really been going at each other. And meanwhile, Skeletor has him up on the shoulders. Could we be seeing an attitude adjustment? We have been seeing bombs from every single one of these men the entire night. It's incredible what these people are willing to put each other through in the sake of getting whatever's in that briefcase. I haven't really decided what's in there yet. Maybe money, maybe power, maybe fame, maybe women. Probably not women, but it could be anything. And Yellow Jacket's setting up something. What does he have? No. Mutants or the suplex on the Zubaz saves him from whatever Yellow Jacket had planned from whatever nefarious deed. Now, now Yellow Jacket's fighting the bees that only he can see, possibly getting strength through his interpretive dance. I'm not quite sure what he's trying to pull off here. And meanwhile, Skeletor's setting him up. He's lifting him up, big choke slam, flips him. That's a devastating choke slam. That could have broken his back if he wasn't careful enough with his landing. 
and a power bomb on the Zubaz. And little Billy's up, but Yellow Jacket's there to meet him. Slams his head down with his elbow into the ladder and a punch sends little Billy down to the mat. And Yellow Jacket follows him, but he goes right back up. He could be getting it, but Skeletor pushes the ladder out of the way and is met with a slam from Mutant Zor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an event that's not easy to call, especially on my throat. But it is still very important that I, I, I convey to you the action, the emphasis going on in the ring right now. And specifically the Cretaceous sensation. Mutant Sword slamming him over and over again with triple German suplexes. The power to stay holding on to Skeletor for three suplexes is unbelievable. Meanwhile, Mutant Sword going, taking his opportunity. No. He must have realized, with his infrared vision, he must have realized that the targeting was off and eats a spine buster for his hesitation. Meanwhile, Little Billy slams his elbow into Von Gulish's head. Yellow Jacket and Zubaz still fighting and a spine buster on the outside. That could keep Yellow Jacket out of the ring for quite a little bit. Ladder shot to the face onto Mutant Sword. And now two ladders are set up and neither of them are in position to get the briefcase. And I don't think Skeletor knows that as he receives a big in, an inverted DDT from Little Billy and a knee drop from the Yellow Jacket. Mutant Sword setting up a ladder, but no, you gotta move the first ladder and Yellow Jacket realized that. Mutant Sword takes the ladder and a big DDT onto Skeletor. Now Von Gulich and Zubaz on the outside. But it seemed that Zubaz might actually have the advantage. Meanwhile, Little Billy's up on the top. He's got the briefcase in his hand. Olympic Slam! Oh my god, Little Billy is dangling. Mutant Sword with a power bomb! Onto the ladder! Little Billy has got to be completely out of it after that attack. And meanwhile, what's Zubaz attempting? He's got Von Gulich up on his shoulders and arranged his end position. The Storm! He finished, he's hit his signature move for the first time ever. The Storm! It's here! And Mutant Sword now up on the ladder. He's hanging on for dear life. What's he going to do? Zubaz like a teardrop onto Von Gulich! Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. What is happening in the ring? There's so much madness. A spin out power bomb slams little Billy down and a backbreaker into a alley oop power bomb onto Mutant Sword. Zubaz has been doing more work than I had anticipated from him. He's been doing well. Drop kick onto the back of Skeletor and a suplex onto the ladder. Absolute madness. And a big DDT from Little Billy! Zubaz goes up to try to get the briefcase, but he's out of position entirely, and he realizes that. Little Billy signaling for a new move, and he hits it! The ninth grade slam! He's not even in the ninth grade, he's naming it for the future! Sets up the ladder, Von Gulish. He could be going up now, and Mutant Sword seems to have caught him in the act. Now he's going up. What does Von Gulish have prepared for him? No, he's getting the yellow jacket. No, he goes off. Little Billy slams the Mutant Sword in the back. Power bomb from the top of the ladder! Von Gulish now taking the opportunity, but Yellow Jacket stops him, pushing the ladder down. Zubaz leaving the ring. Yellow Jacket seeing the bees in his head again. What can he have planned here? Slice bread number two! And meanwhile, a catch suplex from Skeletor onto Little Billy! So many moves are happening at the same time, it's impossible for me to call it all at the same time! And meanwhile, Falcon Arrow on to Von Gulish. While Mutant Sword and Zubaz go at it, a neck slam down to the bottom and a big alley oop onto Von Gulish. Meanwhile, Mutant Sword sets up a ladder and Mutant Sword is also signaling Zubaz for an attack. What could he be signaling? He sets him up. Another Olympic slam. There's no telling what these men are capable of doing, what they're willing to do to get the win. Whatever's in that briefcase, it must mean a lot to him. Skeletor, meanwhile, going up. Seems like he might get the opportunity. A big cross body onto the ladder from Little Billy. He leapt up from the ring and smashed his body into the ladder. Meanwhile, Zubaz is bleeding. Zubaz has been busted open. And now Skeletor is lifting him up and is now going for an Oklahoma slam. Maybe yes, onto Yellow Jacket. Little Billy has set up a ladder and now is trying to take the opportunity but Yellow Jacket sees him. He knows that he can't reach him, but he knows he can reach him with his Imperial Adult Grip. Slamming the head down. Could he push Little Billy down again? Yes, Little Billy with another grievous slam down to the mat. Meanwhile, Yellow Jacket pushed off the top of the ladder by Skeletor. 
Zubaz now setting up the ladder. There are a lot of people down in the ring. Mutantsaur is busy with Von Ghoulish. Could Zubaz get the ladder and take down the briefcase? Zubaz! Zubaz wins the match! Zubaz's first ever victory in the Bubbles and Bubbles Wrestling Association is in this ladder match. He's taking the briefcase for himself! I don't believe it! Zubaz has just proven every doubter, naysayer, much like myself, wrong in that he has just won his first ever match and it's for whatever's in that briefcase. Wait a minute, I recognize that briefcase. That's the briefcase that Kulai Paul found at the beginning of the first, at the ending of the first Bumbles and Grumbles. We still don't know what's inside of it. But whatever it is, it's now in Zubaz's list and capable hands. So, heavens know what he's going to do with it. Still, that crimson mask shows that he is now officially a winner in the Bumbles and Grumbles. And it seems that I'm getting confirmation that uh, none of us wanted to hear. Due to the ending of the Cool Dad versus Power Cat match, there will be no match for Little Lord Birthday to enter the finals. Little Lord Birthday is now gotten a bye into the final match. Meanwhile, that still leaves Cool Hat Paul and Pepsi Man to duke it out for that final spot. Now, finally, we move on to the next match. The first match, of and only match, of round two. Pepsi Man versus Cool Hat Paul. Coming out first, of course, is Pepsi Man. And now we finally get to see what makes this tournament so difficult and so strenuous for those who compete in it. For both of these men, this is their second match in one night. Most wrestlers only ever have to wrestle one, maybe even two if they're unlucky. But one of these men is going to have to wrestle three matches by the end of the night. Pepsi Man can see still, still has quite a bit of pep in his step, still to make that big leap up to the ring. The pyrotechnics haven't been reset up. I don't know when possible between matches, but still, this is going to prove to be a difficult challenge. You know, soda isn't quite the same once you've shaken it up once. We're going to see if that law applies to Pepsi. And meanwhile, the Molten Munchkin himself, Cool Hat Paul, come back out. And you can see that he does not quite have the same theatrics from his first entrance. Cool Hat Paul is in an interesting position. We know for a fact that he has great endurance. He didn't make it that far in the first rumble and ended up winning the second one based purely on luck. No, that is down to an energy inside of him that is uh, he's able to tap into very efficiently. But the rumble and the muscle dream impact lead are two very different situations. It's going to be interesting to see if Kulhan Paul can apply that energy to the, to the dream league as opposed to how he did in the rumbles. With the match starting off, we have our two competitors, and right off the bat, Kulai Paul running, super kick! A super kick directly to Pepsi Man, The Pepsi Man reverses it, and a big overhead German suplex! Two bombs, right at the starting gate! That's incredible, these two immediately went for two gigantic pieces of their offense to start off the match. These two are, are already warmed up, they don't have to get into the next gear, they're starting in that gear. And the tension seems to have mounted more, cooling down a bit, but no, Pepsi Man immediately laying it back up, laying in with Kulai Paul with those punches. And a running Kopu kick again takes down Pepsi Man like he had taken on the foot crawler before. Both of these men are going to be looking to end this match as quickly as possible. They are both in pain, and the longer this match goes on, the more pain they'll be in when they go to the finals to face Little Lord Birthday. And it seems that a body slam those sorts of power moves keep coming from Pepsi Man. He might be the one shaking things up in the finals. But at the same time, you can't discount Cool Hat Paul. Unless you do powerbomb position. No, Cool Hat Paul, it's a face buster! Slams him down directly on the nose! Imagine having your nose slammed directly into the mat. That's a lot of pain that Pepsi Man might be going through, and it's, if those dents add up, I could see death by a thousand cuts for Pepsi Man with Cool Hat Paul's flurry of smaller offense. Headlock with a European-style uppercut into the corner, and he's setting him up. He's on the ropes, and a big, another European uppercut. Pepsi Man is on the ground, and a big curb stomp to the face. He's targeting the face again. Kulai Paul has a lot of a head-based offense, which is for anybody but him completely ironic. Misses a knee lift. He bumps into Pepsi Man, a bit of uncoordination. That could be the fatigue setting in. 
You have to understand, big belly to belly. You have to understand, both these men have wrestled a match. Uh, uh, usually wrestling one match is enough to wipe somebody completely out. If you were had a professional wrestling match, you would know that it's an extremely taxing physical activity and a big handspring elbow. So to go out and do another one is going to take a lot out of these men. And now Kulai Paul focusing on elbow drops to the back, just like he did with the foot brawler. If he takes out the core, then he's going to take out a lot of Pepsi Man's power. Now doing impressive wrist lock techniques, but it does not work in the face of a gigantic clothesline from Pepsi Man. It's, both these men had very difficult paths getting to this portion of the Muscle Dream Impact League. Foot Brawler and Lanky Kong lay in their wake. Foot Brawler, of course, took Cool High Paul to the limits. But Lanky Kong surprised a lot of people and managed to do a lot better than I think a lot of us had anticipated under their handspring elbow. Those two have taken a lot out of these. I'd say that at maximum, they could be at like Sura. He just dropped Kulai Paul directly out of the ring. That plummet to the outside is not going to be good for Kulai Paul's knees. But I'd say that both these men at most are running on at least 70%. And Kulai Paul, what's he doing? Dive to the outside! A springboard maneuver! Launches Kulai Paul from the inside of the ring to the out! That could have gone very badly for Cool Hat Paul. He knows that. If he had been, if he had been even a little bit off and didn't hit the mark the entire way, that could have spelled disaster. But now he seems to have taken momentum back with another uh, break dancing leg drop, and he is appropriately popping off. I would too if I had just pulled off a uh, springboard DDT leg drop all in quick succession. But it seems like no Pepsi man might be able to take back momentum with a clothesline to the back of the head. Pepsi Man now showing off his dominance with power moves. It could be only a matter of time until one of them manages to keep Cool Hat Paul down. Kick to the gut, and now a punch back. The trading blows. No, counters a double axe handle into a super kick. No, dodge. And finally, a clothesline takes him down. This is what I'm talking about with these two. Their technique is so sound and, and, and compact. They know exactly which moves to hit and when to hit them, like that big German suplex to counter the knee lift. And a backflip! Pepsi Man's getting cocky. Kulai Paul might have the answer for that. He knows exactly how to deal with a cocky opponent. He's getting him up. Cool Hat Driver! That drops him directly on his noggin. And not to mention, that leads Kulai Paul into his signature move. We could be seeing either a Cool Hat Crusher or his signature flipping leg drop. And he managed to get a two count on Pepsi Man. That's important. He's taking a lot less time to get to that two count than he did with the foot brawl. Well, I'm sure that if Pepsi Man is able to land one of his injuries, he lands the Pepsi Plunge or the Soda Popper. I'm sure that we could be seeing a different story, although fantastic combination. Did you see that Pele kick? And another elbow drop to the back. The core of Pepsi Man is definitely going to be wrecked after this one. Into the corner, another handspring elbow does not find the mark. Pepsi Man regains control. No, Cool Hat Paul managed to take it back. Double X handle proves me wrong. I don't know what that was, but... No, it might have been Kulai Paul's second win. A running bulldog onto the face! This is what I'm talking about. Kulai Paul is very wisely dissecting that body part. He's not letting up on the face attacks. He's hoping for maybe a KO victory. I'm not entirely sure, but the, he's also making sure to keep the core soft. He has landed that elbow drop quite a few times now. Now he's dragging Pepsi Man to the corner. Setting him up on the top rope. What's he doing? Pepsi Man is now prone up on that top rope, but... Cool and Paul kicks him to the outside! That was a springboard kick to the outside! My goodness! Moves like that you do not see every day, and that just goes to show how much Cool and Paul is willing to put in to win this one. He's got him in a headlock. No, Cool and Paul reversed into the turnbuckle. He gets hit into the steel ring post. Hear a sickening thud when his face bounces off that solid steel, but Cool and Paul still managed to keep his wits about him to an extent. It's anybody's game at this point. Both men have been hitting each other with their WMDs this entire match, but I think he might have just nicked Pepsi Man's face. He's bleeding Cherry Pepsi right there. You can see it. If you bleed during a match, you are literally losing the thing that's keeping your body running. You're going to be running on much more, you know, you're going to be running on empty. And it seems like Kulai Paul realizes that and he's going to be taking advantage of it. 
Popping off. I don't know if that's wise when Pepsi Man's still on his feet. He goes for a kick. No! Gigantic clothesline takes him down. And now Pepsi Man with the ground and pound, pounding away on the head of Cool Hat Paul. There's no telling how the dynamic is going to shift from move to move. But I think that maybe Cool Hat Paul can regain the momentum with that European uppercut. Spin kick to the gut and a super kick combo. It goes for the pin. One, two. No. There wasn't even a signature move deployed there, and yet he was still able to get that two count. And a Hurricane Rana! Pepsi Man is going to have to fight back. He's in an unadvantageous position for, I think, the first time in this entire tournament. Pounded on in the corner, but Pepsi Man manages to reverse it. He has him in the corner now. A big clothesline takes him down. A backflip, you know that's... Uh-oh. That's a scissors kick. Pepsi plunge! Pepsi Man has now got Cool Eye Paul on the ropes. If he can pin him now, I think it might be over. After that slam into the steel ring post, I think it could be over. Goes for the pin, one. No! Cool Eye Paul kicks out at one. A knee lift. Cool Eye Paul is going crazy. He is going, he has found new energy reserves. He's going for a pin, one. No, he kicks out at one, two. It's all about who can land that final finishing maneuver that will end this match. And Kulai Paul trying to wear him down with a submission move. We don't see this very often from Cool Hat Paul. He's more of a striker, not a submission specialist. My goodness, Pepsi Man is in an unadvantageous position. He did not break out of that for quite a while. And you know that the effects of that submission hold are going to last long past when it's actually finished. But Pepsi Man regains control. He's got him up for the soda pumper. Down he goes! Cool Ed Paul is down! Cool Ed Paul is out! You can count to 20 from this position! Cool Ed Paul has no way of kicking out, and we see the end of the match. One, two, three. What? Cool Ed Paul kicked out of the soda popper! And he's fighting back against Pepsi Man! He's whipping him into the corner! He's setting him up on the top ropes! What's he going to do now? Hurricane Rod off the top rope! He has him set up! Cool Ed Paul's going up to the high red district! Flipping like drum! No! Pepsi Man caught him! He's got him up on the shoulders! Soda Popper! He caught him out of midair like a like a predator, like an animal! He's going for the pin! One! Two! Three! Pepsi Man has defeated Cool Hat Paul with a catching soda popper! My goodness! Pepsi Man ended that match in an instant and is going on to the finals! But look at the damage he sustained. Cool Hat Paul did not leave this fight without taking a bite out of Pepsi Man. And now, Pepsi Man's got to go into the final round against Little Lord Birthday on a bad wheel, a bad body entirely. He's trying to posture to the fans, but you can see the effects of the match. They have taken a toll on Pepsi Man. He is dented. Heavens know how this is going to end, folks. I am excited to see this. The finale of the Muscle Dream Impact League. The, the winner of this will get their wish granted by Rescalapoca, Pepsi Man, or Little Lord Birthday. It's been a tri- What? They're still fighting backstage. These two have been going at it for the entire ladder match and the previous match. They're ruthless. They're not going to stop until the Sonics separate them. Good God, these two are an- Commissioner Sonic! I don't think we should have seen that. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event of the evening, the finals of the Muscle Dream Impact League, Little Lord Birthday versus Pepsi Man. Coming out first is Pepsi Man, clearly showing the effects of his night so far. Pepsi Man has had to undergo more pain and suffering in this night than potentially any other wrestler in Bumbles McFumbles wrestling history. Cool Hat Paul may have weathered the entire rumble from the beginning to the end, but that does not at all measure up to what Pepsi Man has had to go through. Having to fight Lanky Kong, who showed up more than anyone expected him to. And then Cool Hat Paul, one of the most widely dangerous competitors in the entire roster, is now has to end his night by going up against its most dastardly and devilish Little Lord Birthday. We've talked on before, we've touched on before the fact that we had all hoped that Little Lord Birthday would be like Little Billy, a, a good upstanding young man. But no, he has not only cheated in every match he's ever won in, but now he's cheated his way into the finals for a very advantageous position, I believe. Though he is quoted as saying, if I win and I get my wish granted by Rescalapoca, 
I'm going to wish for every day to be my birthday. And you can imagine the power that he would hold at that point is immeasurable and could potentially threaten a lot of people. But there's no more time for lollygagging. It's time for the main event. It's now underway. Pepsi Man versus Little Lord Birthday. And Pepsi Man starting off strong. Smacks him to the ground, but... Oh, no. I think we might finally be seeing the fatigue come into effect. Pepsi Man is not at 100%. I said he was at 70% in the last match. We're talking maybe 30% in this one. Meanwhile, Little Lord Birthday, despite the fact he took a battering from Bertista, no doubt has been able to recover given all the time that's had to pass since his last match. He might be fully refreshed by this point. But Pepsi Man still showing that that 30% might be more than Little Lord Birthday's willing to handle with a series of strong clotheslines. Taking him right down to the... And, and in a Bumbles McFumbles wrestling event, you're always going to see something new. That's a main event quality occurrence. That seems to be something of the devil. I'm not sure. But ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be witnessing a 60-minute no disqualification, no holds barred, anything goes. That was meant to even the playing field for the two tired competitors, but I think that might be giving Little Lord Birthday a little too much of an advantage, although it might be able to even the playing field for a very exhausted, decarbonated Pepsi Man. Time will tell depending on who can take advantage of this sooner German suplex onto the floor. That's got to do a lot of damage, especially onto that explosive. There's matting, there's matting uh, around a bit of the ring, but it's exposed on a large bit of it. Cool like Paul is not in the ring. I don't know why he said his name. Little Lord Birthday, on the other hand, managed to stop Pepsi Man from using that ring bell on him. And is now taking task. And no, another German suplex nearly through the announce table. Pepsi Man is desperately trying to get that bell to even the odds against Little Lord Birthday. But he might not even need it. Those hammer-like clotheslines even it up well enough. And I think he could be going for it. He, he tripped him. He did like a little uh, Three Stooges alley-oop. You can see Pepsi Man is clearly not 100% there. I think that he might be a little confused in all honesty because of his situation. He's in a lot of pain and that's going to affect his decision making. That might not make him make the best decisions at all moments of the time that he's in the ring. Or even out of the ring for that matter. If he can win this, however, he will get his wish. He's kept that wish very close to his chest on what exactly it will be. But still, it will be exciting to see what one of these men does with the limitless power of the wrestling god, Rescalapoca. And it seems like he wants to take advantage. He knows that he wants it real bad, so he goes for a big suplex. You can see the heavily taped arm of Pepsi Man. That both works as, you know, padding to keep that arm from not getting furtherly injured. But... It also works as a gigantic symbol to Little Lord Birthday saying, Strike here. Little Lord Birthday, though, has not been able to mount much offense, although I speak too soon. The face buster down there. Make sure that Pepsi Man stays down for a little while longer. But then that big meaty clothesline. No, more fatigue is setting. He's collapsing at random points and only barely being able to get himself back up. And it lets Little Lord Birthday take control of the hip toss. This match, it, 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 the tournament itself has served but nothing but a detriment to Pepsi Man in how he is not at 100%. If he was at 100% of his strength, I don't know how long this match would last. I don't even think it would last past the five minute mark. But because Little Lord Birthday is at 100% and Pepsi Man is not, it is making this a fair fight. Although, Pepsi Man has been getting the lion's share of the offense. Little Lord Birthday might need to use a weapon to get out of his fisherman suplex and even the odds. Going for more ground and pound. Pepsi Man fighting like a caged animal. A kip up. And Pepsi Man launching Little Lord Birthday out of the ring. It's only going to be a matter of time until another form of weaponry is introduced to this match. And it might be when Little Lord Birthday takes control like that. Pepsi Man though finding a way to reverse it. A kick to the gut keeps him back. He's got that big, you can't see me, John Cena. It's his favorite wrestler. His t-shirt is acting as a target. Oh! That was a stiff right hand from Pepsi Man. On to Little Lord Birthday. And a fan is offering his crutch from the audience. And Pepsi Man is taking it and battering Little Lord Birthday. That fan doesn't even need it, but he's still using it. 
And now Pepsi Man throws down the crutch and seems to be wanting to end this right way with a suplex on the outside. Almost lands on that ring belly procured earlier. Pepsi Man now whipping him into the corner of the table. That's got to hurt. And now he's grappling again, but no little Lord Birthday gains the advantage. Goes for the go-behind, gets him in a headlock and an elbow to the face. The technical mastery on, dis on display. You get to see how athletic this young man is. But Pepsi Man has the power of that suplex. Almost landed him directly on the steel ring post. That would have been devastating. He's got the ring bell. Smashed to the face. He just got his clock cleaned. Little Lord Birthday has been smashed across that face with that solid steel ring bell. And, uh-oh, Pepsi Man collapsed again. And Little Lord Birthday, he's going for it. He's got him in a DDT, no! Pepsi Man's been hit with the DDT, can he get out of this? Oh no, one, two, no, he kicks out. He manages to escape the maneuver. And Pepsi Man grabs him and gets him in a submission hold now. He's got him locked in. This could be it. He could tap out right here. No, Pepsi Man, let's go. Pepsi Man's building up ahead of steam. If he can land those finishing maneuvers. No. Little Lord Birthday takes back control and now gets him in a running bulldog. The same move that Cool Eye Paul used to such effectiveness back in their match. He's now posturing. That's not a good sign. Pepsi Man's going to need to stay vigilant against him. He knows that Little Lord Birthday is a wily competitor and could take him out at any moment potentially, so now he might start targeting a limb like the leg, for instance, or the head with more ground and pound. He's gone back to those punches quite a bit, a bit of MMA training, a bit of MMA influence in his technique, I'm not quite sure. Sends him back to the outside of the ring. What could he have planned out here? Could he use one of the weapons that he's procured on the outside of the ring, like the crutch, the ring belt? These aren't the traditional weapons that you see in a hardcore match. Leaps up to the ring apron with great efficiency. No, he counters the hit into a German suplex. These aren't the typical moves that you see in a no disqualification match. You usually see other, you know, like chairs and kendo sticks, but we are seeing crutches, ring bells, and now a garbage can. What was that doing under the ring? Big Fisherman suplex onto the outside. Those attacks on the outside do so much more damage. And now, Pepsi Man's procured a guitar. Who brought a guitar to the ring? No, Little Lord Birthday counters. He has the guitar now. Pepsi Man is just barely able to counter and get the guitar out of his hands, but an elbow to the face. Puts him in an advantageous position. Another elbow. He's targeting that, that bruised mush and a throw into the sting steel ring post. Puts him on the back foot. Pepsi Man's got the guitar. He could be playing the blues in a second here. Smash to the face. Cuts open Little Lord Birthday. Sends him flying down to the mat. Rockets him into the corner. Pepsi Man now going for another full Nelson slam. Pepsi Man might have been able to even the odds here. I think we finally have a fair fight without the Little Lord Birthday having the advantage with having gotten time to rest up. Now he's got him in a powerbomb position. Could he powerbomb on the outside? Sending him down to the mat below with a stinging, spine-rattling powerbomb. Now he's got him near the barricades. What could be planning there? Little Lord Birthday attempting to mount a comeback, but not quite yet. He's got him by the scruff of the neck, throws him against the barricade, and is now pounding him. He's fallen on the outside behind the barricade. He's punching him through the bars. Insanity. But now he's setting him back up. He's grabbed him again. He's throwing him into the corner there. What could he have planned? Pepsi Man, Pepsi Man, Pepsi Man! He just speared him through the ring barricade. That adds so much more dangerous potential to that move. He has slammed him all the way through onto the steel. He's fallen onto that hard steel. Now Pepsi Man needs to find a way to capitalize and get him back in the ring. And he's throwing him into that steel ring post again. Slams him down, doesn't even try to throw him back into the ring. He just lets him fall. He's grabbing him again. What could he be planning now? Is he going to get him back into the ring? Seems like that's what he's attempting here. And a big Irish whip back into the ring. And what's he doing now? Grabbing the trash can. Another weapon. It's like there's a jamboree going on in the ring. The drum band slams his face down onto the trash can with a drop toehold. 
But it looks like Pepsi Man's not gonna take that line down. Suplex onto the trash can! He just slammed his entire body down to the sharp edges of that steel trash can. And now is launching him into the corner. Bounces off. Going back to the other corner. He's got him trapped there. What's Pepsi Man gonna do here? Setting him up on the top rope. Could he be going for another superplex? Blow to the face. He's got him in the position. Can he do it? Onto that steel trash can. He does! Pepsi Man slams his opponent down. And now he's going for a backflip. He's showing that he's still got the energy to fight. Pepsi Man's bringing him up. What can he go for now? He's going for the Pepsi punches. He's dancing around. He's showing that he has all the confidence in the world. Pepsi Man is barely, barely able to bring himself through the rest of this match and is now jumping around the ring with such enthusiasm. Lifting him up. Is he going for it? No, Little Lord Birthday launches him into the ring. No, belly to belly overhead. Pepsi Man, he's signaling for it. That's his taunt to show he's going for the soda popper. Little Lord Birthday stays. He's got him up on his shoulders. Soda popper. This could be it. He's going for the cover. One, two, it's over. Pepsi Man has won the first ever Muscle Dream Impact League. He threw everything at Little Lord Birthday. Little Lord Birthday had the advantage going in. And still, still, Pepsi Man is able to eke out a win. No matter what, Pepsi Man has finally made good on all that potential people saw in him in the first two Bumbles with Grumbles. And now he can finally call himself a winner in the Bumbles with Grumbles 3. He is the winner of the Muscle Dream Impact League. And at our next event, Bumbles with Grumbles 4, we will get to see what Pepsi Man's wish will be on the mighty wrestling god, Res Kalapoka. He can barely make it to his feet, but Pepsi Man realizes he has gone the distance and is now the winner of the Muscle Dream Impact League. You can see him clutching his gut there. He might be leaking Pepsi for all we know, but it doesn't matter. He withstood Lanky Kong, Cool Hat Paul, and Little Lord Birthday, and he now call himself a winner. For everybody at the Fumbles for Fumbles Wrestling Federation, and for myself, Jack, thank you for being here with us.